Well, uh, my name's Stephen Brailsford. I'm here with the actor Ken Kitson, who's uh, best known probably for PC Cooper. Yeah, in Last of the Summer Wine. Last of the Summer Wine. But yeah. it's Ken's 50th year <laughs> as an actor. Yeah. And what Just we're going to do. Get quick. Yeah, 50 years as an actor. <laughs> and what we're going to do over a series of interviews, we're going to get into depth in what you've done right. and your roles and yeah, what ambitions you've still got. Oh, yeah. yeah. Things work because we all have ambitions. And so, what we're going to do is do it over a certain period of time. Yeah. Throughout your 50th year. So 50 years in July. Yeah, yeah. Now, I didn't realise <laughs> until I was looking at Ken's background and what he's done in the past. I grew up watching this man <laughs> in some of my favourite programmes. Yeah. Going way back to Danger UXP, yeah, Vanderbilt. Yeah, Vanderbilt. Uh, all those. Yeah, I, that was my yeah. thing. But Ken, right, so we'll start off with your early stuff and right. then... As we progress throughout this series, yeah, yeah, we'll get more into depth of the later stuff, like Last of the Summer Wine. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll settle with your early stuff. Yeah. So, what inspired you to become an actor? What what made you want to become an actor? Um, I was in an amateur group in Bradford uh, called the Barnstormers, and um, what it was uh, originally. They did a, a Dales tour, Yorkshire Dales tour, and I wasn't acting then. And what I had, I was the only one in the group with a car, basically. <laughs> so I became the treasurer on this Yorkshire Dales tour. <laughs> so that was it. Now, one of the actors, an actor well known called John Dutine, yeah. right, who's done everything. I mean, you can check on him, he's done everything. And he was in the group and he fell ill on this tour. And there was something to stand in. And I couldn't learn, obviously, the massive parts he got, but the smaller parts, I learned them, and I did it. And it was like, wow. And I really just, and that was it. And I was a printer at the time. I did yeah. my apprenticeship as a printer. I ended up, before I went to drama school, as a manager of a printer at 21 year old, All right, right in, in Bradford. So I did that for about three years. And then and, um, when I was 23, I went to drama school at age 15 acting school in Essex and I applied for um, Drama Centre and Lambda and I got in uh, Lambda and I got in East 15. Uh, now um, in that mean in the meantime I was getting fed up of uh, printing and John had moved to London and uh, he wanted a fourth in the flat and I thought why not <laughs> so that was it so I'm going to London but, 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 I, need, yeah, but I need you work so I ended up getting another printing job in London, right? But then I was going to an amateur group from North London to South London a couple of nights a week and it ended up nearly six nights a week I was going across. And then I just said to the director, this is what I want to do. He said, really? I said, yeah. He said, well, I think you've got a chance. And that was it. That's how it started. Wow. Then they applied to drama schools and got in a couple. And that was it. Fantastic. Your first professional role, when you came out of drama school, your first professional role, what was it and what? I'm, I've been trying to think of that, Steve, and it's like, there's a couple I can think of. One of them, it was a film with Barry Humphreys, you know, that plays Dave Medner. Yeah. And it was called The Adventures of Barry McKenzie. <laughs> and I did play the show for Bodyguard, but also did the fight arrangements for the film because I'd, um, I, I won the uh, stage fight diploma at drama school and then the guy that taught me wanted somebody to stand in while he went off and did another job. So I ended up doing the fights for the film. And I, that was either one of my first jobs or it was a thing called Nobody's Norman, which was with one of my heroes of all time, Norma Wisdom. Oh, wow. Wow. And so I played the milkman in a thing called Nobody's Norman. I had about five lines. And um, I'll go on to that later, but just quickly, 25 years after, when I was in Summer Wine, um, I was going to tell him, but I'm not going to He said, do you remember we worked together? On, uh, yeah. And he came to me and said, we've worked together before, haven't we? And I was going to tell him, <laughs> said, don't tell me, I'll tell you. And he came back in an hour, Stephen, and he said, you play the milkman. And nobody's Norman, and so-and-so, so-and-so, 
and so many other characters and everything. Oh wow, that that and is that was the mark of the man. Yeah, that that's amazing because I think what's nice it's not only the mark of the man, but it it, it proves that that you leave an impression. Yeah. With people. Yeah. I, I know that Without feeling there. because. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I know that feeling because it's happened to me with stuff that people turn around and they go, yeah, they yeah. know that. You know? Yeah. But it, you know, it, it's a wonderful thing to actually show the impact that you actually have yeah. on people. Yeah. That they remember you and, and everything like that. Yeah. Now, you you, you did this. Uh, I forgot the name of the, the, the secret life of Baron McKenzie. Yeah, Venture Baron McKenzie. Yeah. yeah. Right, you, you, you did that. And then, was that a TV or film? No, it was a film That's with film. Um, And the main actor was Barry Humphreys and Barry Crocker, who was an Australian actor. But, yeah. And Julie Covington. Oh, right, Julie yeah, Covington. Yeah. Don't cry for me. Argentina. Yeah, film. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Lovely lady. And um, she went on and did a lovely album, The Rock Follies, years after oh, that. Time. I yeah, that. I think I've still got it actually. But um, so I did the fights for that, and I also remember Barry coming up with Barry Humphreys, and he, he just wanted one moment of, of glory, right? Yeah. So I said, well, because you want a fighter in the film, we're playing a hippie, yeah. right? So I just said, well, what can we do for you? I said, I'll tell you what, go up to your character, the one that you're you know, addressing to fight, sort of thing, point upwards, like when he looks up, grab his balls. <laughs> <laughs> so he did it, and he loved it. Absolutely loved it. You know, and he kept going round at lunchtime going this way. <laughs> but he was a lovely guy. but well, still is a lovely bloke. You know. Oh, I mean? amazing. But, uh, yeah, to think I worked with Dave Edna yeah. you know, before he became Dave Edna You know, that's amazing. And he, 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 like he just loved this thing. Yeah. And the thing where he gets kicked in the teeth, right? So I did all the fights where he gets kicked. And he's, what I did, he gave him a mouthful of poor moments. And he, <laughs> he, he broke them all up in his mouth. Yeah. And when he got kicked in the teeth, he went, like that. And I'll be, oh, <laughs> well, I'll be some fun. Well, I'll like, kick the teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, early days. Well, you do before special oh, no. effects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play the show for Bodyguard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. So, what was your, your first TV role? What was your first TV? I think the, one of the first ones would have been Nobody is Norman, you yeah. know, but the first lead I had in TV um, was a thing called A Wish for Wally's Mother. For Wally's Mother? Yeah, where I played a, mind, a, a character with the mind of a 10 year old, and I was about 27 then. Oh. And that was with a, an old actress called Ruth Dunning, and a, an Irish actress called Maureen Toll, and it was in a series of plays called Seven Faces of Women. And Charles Aznavour did the theme tune, the yeah. She, yeah. the song She. He used to sing that, you know, beginning of every episode. Oh, she, sort of thing. The yes, like that's the one. Yeah, it so it's like um, there were seven different plays, and I was in one of them, and I had the lead in it. I played Wally, and I'd never done anything. I mean, a lot of big names apparently I found out after Wentworth's part. But I said, How did you, why did you pick me then? Because I just my drama school, basically. He said, The one line you did. On the read through, and it got you that part. Yeah. I said, Go on then. He said, No, I'll tell you what it is. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. yeah and I, I'll try going go to character yeah. to yeah. do it because I say, um, uh, uh, like a builder, but it's a mind of a 10 year old, you're like a kid basically. Yeah. And the line was, She's got big tits, haven't she, Mum? And that was it. <laughs> And that's what got me the part. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, and it was a lovely, lovely character to play. Yeah. Really was, yeah. Really good. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, I've talked about, like, Danger UXP. Yeah. But I hope I've tapped that. I love that series. That Every great. single week I used yeah. to watch that series. Not true stories and, as well. And and I yeah. believe there were. So, yeah. well, you know, uh, and you, you played... Corporate oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did um, 11 episodes out of 13, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And did, how did you find that? I mean, because I'm looking at, at, at the, the people that were in it and the way the characters were. Yeah. 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 Anthony Andrews, yeah. And he had the lead, obviously. Judy Geeson was like the female lead. Then you had Georgius, um, 
loads of actors came, Ken Paddington he used to play Billy Walker in yeah. Coronation Street he became a mate of mine with Ken and uh, yeah there were a lot of people a lot of good people in it and um, Robert Pugh who now does um, he does the voice for the repair shop oh. you ever watched that now <laughs> yeah. he's doing some yeah. loads of Loads yeah. of good stuff with Robert, you know. And it was a great series to do because Ken Cranham, he was another one that was in it, who was a big actor, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, gone on to do some great stuff. But it was that intense, even though it was like um, uh, a false bomb, obviously, you know, yeah. like a dummy. But you're working that close with these fuses and all. It was that well done, was it? The props. You were sweating. Absolutely yeah. sweating. And the one episode where they had them... Um, Butterfly bombs, yeah. And the Germans used to do these butterfly bombs with all different colours, and they dropped them out of the planes and used to wind themselves up like that. And the, the the one episode where I did where they were in a chandelier, yeah, in a church, and I had to defuse these things in a church, and they were just sweat pouring off me. And it was weird. It was like I didn't have to, I couldn't, you know, invent that. It's it like was, honesty oh, of the character. Unbelievable. And yeah. It was there, and it was such a good series to do. And they're all true stories, you know what I mean? Wow. And we had the guy that um, was in the actual bomb squad with his friend that was blown up and he was um, on the pier at yeah. uh, Norfolk in Cromer, at uh, Cromer in, in, in Norfolk, and that's where we used the pier. And he was blown up there and he came along with the guy, the other guy, and he was on his hand and he was blind, he'd been blinded by the bomb. Oh, wow. But he was still there and listening to all this going on. How the hell he went through it, I don't know, Stephen, but he did, and he, he just relived it all. Wow. You know? And he was prepared to do that, you know. Amazing series. Really I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, I, I, I loved it as a, as a child growing up. I, I loved that. It was, that was like my first introduction to serious drama. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, apart from cartoons and, yeah, exactly, and yeah, usual yeah. HR puff <laughs> and stuff and all that kind of stuff. You know, I wasn't into anything drama, but, yeah. but I've always been into history, and particularly modern history, like World War Two and things yeah, like that. Yeah. And and I found that because it was so touching that the character you you, yeah. you actually got to feel what the characters yeah, were, were yeah. going through. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the fact that it was true stories, I think that's what mm. that showed. It actually showed, you know, the real stories. It showed, you know, in the. In the uh, you know, in, in the actors, in, in the, the roles that they played, you know, and the uh, yeah. performances, it really did. It was brilliant. Yeah. I'll say, before all that, what were like, the things like the BAFTAs and all that going there? Was, I don't think there were, were there? I've they? never been for one, no. They, you no, know, so I, I was just thinking, I think they were out of the phone, mate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because like, looking at that series, the, the quality of it, I, I actually was on YouTube last night, Yeah. just, just going through, and, and looking at some of the clips. By God, you were good looking when you were younger. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, I was looking on YouTube at, at, what were, at what you were doing and things like that. It was actually the butterfly one that oh, yeah. I was yeah. looking at yeah. uh, and everything. And you was thinking, the actual, the way it was made, it, it was good. You, you know, was it like the, when they filmed now, it takes forever in a day. Was it the same? No, it, it, was quicker. Was it, more... it, you know, it quicker. I mean, the amount of times, and I'm not being known for it, but I've always been good to get like things done in one take and two takes rather than nine, yeah. ten, eleven, like a lot of people. And um, we did a lot of things in one take. We yeah. really did because things like you, where you you're pushing a bomb in the east end to push it into the tent to get rid of it. Yeah. You keep setting that up and it takes forever, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we had to do it and we all had to do it together and we did it, you know. Yeah. And worked as a team and that's what it was. Well, that, that's the zombie disposal squad, squad was a team, was, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that, that was the big thing about it. But also, looking at the way the filming is developed, I mean, it used to be filmed. Yeah, back in those days, yeah, and it was expensive to make. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where now yeah. everything's digital; it's all on a card. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, yeah. it's all that. Yeah. So you know, you needed to be more on the ball yeah. with getting yeah. it, getting it done yeah. or anything like that. But it was a brilliant series. I've got it on DVD, but they never did it over here. I had to send to America for it. Yeah, yeah I say I, I was actually scouring uh, on on all the platforms because uh, I, I I was. 
watching one of the videos where there was a guy talking about he was doing a, one of these blogs about yeah, yeah, being the USB, yeah. XP. And he said at the time it was on Amazon, so right. I was searching all the platforms. Yeah. And it's not out there. I mean, I've not checked uh, the BritBox thing because right. that's the, probably the only one that, if it's on, it could yeah. be on there. Well, I saw it being repeated on channel 81. Yeah. Just recently. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and I can't think, is it Talking Pictures or something like that? It was on one of them channels, anyway. They, and I just had to flick through. But I couldn't get it. I just saw it come up, but I couldn't get it on, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it annoyed me, you know. But I mean, I've got a DVD anyway. But uh, I don't know what you're like, but I've got all these DVDs oh, and videos, <laughs> and I still watch them when they come on time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must have watched Rocky, Rocky one, two, three, four, and five. It's all right. You've got to stuff adverts again, haven't you? You're like, let's for the adverts. But I know. But I know. you know, if, if they really made that kind of program, yeah, that, if they made it and turned it into a film or something yeah, like that, yeah. if they took that, the the storylines that were there and turned it into a film, you know. Would you still? What would you love to be involved? Oh, yeah, in? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm no, 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 but seventy-five now. It's a different, you know, obviously, a different character. Oh, you don't look you, know. yeah, well. <laughs> you, you don't look seventy-four. Oh, are you Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> Age is just a number. It Tell is. That to it's, yeah, yeah. It is. Oh, yeah, it is. Age is just a number. It's we, we oh, just love you, <laughs> We just go on. I mean, life yeah, is life is good. I mean, we all go through trials and tribulations yeah. in life and things like that. But yeah. you've got to enjoy Life's it. Life's and then you die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a fight. I quote for the day. It's a fight. <laughs> and uh, but, so you know. But what we'll, we'll keep with your early stuff. Yeah. Right. Because uh, that that was round about 1972, 74, yeah. something yeah. like that. Now, you you did another one that I used to love. Van der Volk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did and that one for Houston Films, and I did, in the same year, I did the Sweeney, yeah. the Minder, um, Van der Volk, and UXB, and they're all the same company. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Lovely villain in the Sweeney, another villain in the Minder, and then a uh, detective in uh, Van der Volk with Barry Foster. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I was just going to say Van der Volk, another one, it was like, my introduction to yeah. Holland. Simon Park Corkick's extra. Uh, uh, orchestra, I'll get the word. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it was at the band of all. Got to number one, first instrumental, I think. Really? Of a, of a big band. Yeah, yeah. The, the, in that time period, yeah. that would get to number one with Van Gogh yeah. High Level. Yeah. Uh, so I still use it in music quizzes now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great because I had a lot of time off in Amsterdam as well, so I could. Mm. Go around and um, I, I actually believe it or not, I went to see all the uh, galleries and stuff like that, the yeah. Rembrandt and the Van, der, uh, Van Gogh and all that, and to see them paintings. Yeah. You know, I also remember one called the Night Watch, yeah. and uh, massive, massive painting scene on this wall. But somebody had slashed it, oh. and they slashed it. They tried to repair it, but right in the middle was this little girl and a light, like a lantern, yeah. and the, the artist. Rembrandt, obviously, and it, it was like it was shining, this yeah. light, it was unbelievable. Things. And it lit the whole painting up. Wow. And I'll never, ever forget that. Wow. You must, have, you, you must have worked with some amazing people. Oh, yeah. Uh, and things like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm not one for big the name, of them, yeah. big, 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 <laughs> big name droppers. No, go on. Uh, and obviously, you know what it's I like. Few, yeah. You know what it's yeah. like in this game, you work with people. And some people are not quite the person you think yeah. they are, yeah. but other people are nicer than yeah. you actually think exactly. they are. You know, they live up to what you expect them to. Yeah, that's but not 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 that's knocking. Most rewarding thing. Yeah, but not knocking anybody. You know, what kind of names have you worked with? Well, on one film alone, I did um, the witness for the prosecution, and that was Peter Salis that was in played Clegg in Summer Wine, um, Diana Rigg. Um, Donald Pleasance, mm. uh, Sir Ralph Richardson, Richard Vernon, Deborah Kerr, wow. Bo Bridges, <laughs> all in one film. And the, you know, Deborah Kerr was the most beautiful lady you could ever wish to meet. She was wow. so 
kind and so she was just lovely. Yeah. And, and Donald Pleasant, so played all these villains. Yeah. He was the most modest man you could ever wish to meet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying, trying, to, one film trying, trying, to, picture, I'm trying to picture Deborah <laughs> Kerr. Now Deborah Kerr, because she was in the Hollywood musicals yeah. and all that, and the big films. King and, and I. King and I. Get yeah, it's no. Yeah. It's yeah. No. Yeah. All about. Dance in a yellow pin. Yeah. 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 Shall we dance yeah. to that? Yeah. Etc. Et I watched it. Etc. 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 Oh, dear mate, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. amazing yeah. career. And that was just one film, but again, I've worked with um, Albert Finney, uh, yeah. Simon Ward, Mark McManus that played Taggart, yeah. um, Alan Armstrong, uh, Brian Cox, yeah. and they were all in one production of a play called Cromwell yeah. at, at the Royal Court, um, a play by David Storey, and uh, I did the fight arrangements for that as well. Wow. So uh, it was good because um, the fight arranger was Bill Hobbs. Yeah. And he was a brilliant fight arranger. He, did, he was in the Olympic years ago, but after that, he went on to do fight arranging. And he did the fights for the Three Musketeers. Oh, wow. And what he did, he set the fights, and then he had to go off and do, I think it was Hamlet in Germany or something. Yeah. So he left me with it to polish it all up, to get them all to do, you know, get mm. To perform standards, and that's what I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that was just in one production. <laughs> and another guy, Albert Finney, was lovely. Yeah, I mean Albert Finney. The, I mean, I look at the stuff here. Daddy Warbucks. Oh in, yeah. In Annie, in the yeah. original Annie film. Yeah. Right. He's also in another one of my favourite films where he plays this uh, like lawyer, and that's Aaron Brockovich. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? You know, yeah. In that. Yeah. Was Julia Roberts. Roberts. Yeah. yeah. What amazing, lovely acting and lovely guys. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! And Brian Cox, who's gone on to bigger things now, obviously yeah. in Hollywood, you know. But, so uh, out of your early stuff, so we'll, we'll come back to all your oh, yeah, yeah, other yeah. stuff yeah. later as we as we progress down this yeah. this idea that you yeah. have. Yeah. Uh, this path. This path. Yeah. <laughs> we all follow a path. Fifty. Path. Fifty. <laughs> 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 I'll be under the two when we finish these interviews. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, but you'll be tuning in, you'll be watching it. Yeah. I won't uh, tell you his age, but can you? Yeah, oh God, yeah, he turns on I'm slightly just, yeah, exactly. just over a decade behind yeah, you. Yeah. But it's another year, I'll be 60. Yeah. So it's like, I yeah, I don't look it. <laughs> Sorry, you don't look at Steve. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, out of your your early career, yeah, what is the the most sort of like rewarding role you played? Do you think? I think that was from Olive's mother. That was um, yeah, that was amazing because I did some research on that, and I went to um, like an institution where these sort of people were. You know, like yeah. Um, I don't know what the uh, word is now. It's correct. So I don't need yeah. to call it. You yeah. know, uh, what's politically correct nowadays? Learning the Then you say backward like or retired yeah. or whatever. And I also remember this one character, this one guy, and he was sat there and he was building these wooden bricks mm. and he was going rocking back and forward like that. Yeah. And I watched him and watched him. And he, cause he just, I didn't even know that he'd seen me. And all of a sudden, he picked one of these bricks up and threw it at me. And it just missed me out, you know. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. That's what I'm going to do if you can. That's the kind of character. And then went, yeah. And I thought, I've got to get some of that character in there. Yeah. And there were a few like that. that I, I yeah, because I mean, I mean, luckily, as, as time has changed and people's are not so ignorant yeah. to, to that kind of yeah, thing yeah. now. Uh, because I mean, obviously, we come from a time where it was shoved in a cupboard. Well, at one time, you've got a Down syndrome actor or yeah. anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now it's brilliant. Oh, it's brilliant. It. I mean, I, I, I do a lot of work with yeah. the, a Down yeah. syndrome group in Hull. Yeah. Uh, I do a lot with something called Downright Special. Yeah. 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 It, it doesn't matter to me what abilities, whether physical abilities, whether it be race, religion, sexuality, anything if there's a i, I believe there's two kind of people in this world 
there's either nice people yeah. or not nice people. Yeah, oh yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what, yeah. whatever's in between. Oh, you're you're either nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> I, know the feeling. I, know the I mean, they're not nice people. I haven't worked with so many. I must have No, no. You, I, I think in the creative industry, I think more people uh, are, are quite like supportive and really nice because, uh, like, like me and you, we've known each other for a, a few, quite yeah, a few, a few years, years now, now. Yeah. and. You know, we, we're on different levels of what we've done and different things. And, but, you know, you're like very supportive of what I'm trying to yeah, achieve. Yeah. And obviously, I, I you know, really appreciate that. Yeah. And you, you find that with a lot of actors that are established, that people look at them, the, the general public look at you as, oh, wow, they're a star. Well, yeah, yeah. But you're just a person. Yeah, yeah. And you just want to, like we were talking earlier, uh, before we started this, about we like to help people. Yeah, yeah. I love helping people and showing people the skills yeah. I, I have yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And that's all yeah. part of it to me, really is, you know. Any actor or entertainer, any performer, whatever, if they put themselves on a pedestal, that's where they're going wrong. Yeah, and a lot of people do, unfortunately. If the public put you up there, you can't stop that. No, but don't ever, ever forget your roots. No, and that's the trouble with a lot of actors that do, especially younger actors these yeah. days. Um, and that's something you should never do. It's so easy for people to become I'm a star, yeah, 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 yeah. that's not the thing. Yeah, if someone wants to call you a celebrity, a star, a legend, whatever they want to call you. That's there, up to them. I've been called many things. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. A leg end, many of them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but the thing is that it's, it's got to come from them. You can't do it. Yeah. And I know a few actors that have put themselves up there and actually turned around with that wonderful line, don't you know who I am? Well, my answer to that is, there's a guy here don't know who he is. Yeah, yeah he might not know who he is. Yeah, he might have remembered <laughs> on him. Yeah. Yeah. And that just puts them down. And yeah. I've actually done it to people. Yeah. I think that, that's the main thing is, I, I, I think what you do is you enjoy what you do. Yeah. And I love acting. Yeah. I, well, this is it. I, yeah. I love performing. Yeah. I love helping people. Yeah. I think, I think once you find it's a passion, it's not a job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, we, 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 have more of the, we have more of the opportunities to show the passion. Yeah, but it's in your but, blood. Yeah. And people that have said to me, actors mainly, that have said, oh, I'm, I'm packing it up. And I'm thinking, how can they? If it's, if it's in the blood, they can't do that. Right? Yeah. I mean, all right, I have worked for quite a while, as you know, and I've talked to you quite yeah, a while. Yeah, we've talked, talk, yeah. You know what I mean? I think the profession has, you know, they've they used me and that's it. I'm, I'm finished now. I don't think I'll do much more. Yeah. But... I don't regret any of the jobs I did, yeah. ever. And I loved every second of being. Well, there's, there's always the people out there that may be looking for the more mature <laughs> person to you be say that the so role. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the more mature the person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like yeah. an old Shakespeare, can't they? <laughs> they, can, they can give them a bit of stick. <laughs> Yeah, there might be somebody out yeah. there. Well, it's first time I've had a band that I know, I know. I've had a full beard. I hardly recognise you. I know, you've had a full beard in winter. <laughs> That's what I used to do with winter growth. I thought I'd just, just try it, you know. Yeah. I look like a, an aged musketeer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all for one and one for all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All That's for it. one and they're all for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. Well, I'll tell you what, Ken. I think, thank you so much for talking to no me. Problem, mate. No problem. And yeah, certainly, we, Ken came up with this idea of we're going to do a series of interviews, sort of like this, informal chats, yeah. talking about Ken's 50 years. I mean, that's <laughs> a lifetime for a lot of people. Yeah. It's yeah. more than a lifetime for some. Yeah. You know, yeah. it is. In, you know, halfway to a century. I English know. cricketers I don't know. score that much. You know? <laughs> yeah. I know. You know? I know. And what we're going to do, we're going to, we'll talk about various different things that you've done, what you've achieved, what you've done on stage. Yeah. 
we'll go we'll get towards the end we'll talk about last of the summer wine. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I did that for twenty seven years. That twenty seven yeah. years. That's over half your career. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. That was on enough. It wasn't you know all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. That was in it, but involved in it for twenty seven yeah. years. Yeah. And some things that we've actually shared in, which we didn't know, uh, that me just doing the extra work as I was at that yeah, point. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm into the acting. I was in shipment prescription for murder. Oh yeah. My Another bit, detective. Yeah, yeah. My bit got cut yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Too undemanding. <laughs> <Yeah>. Story, story <laughs> yeah, of my life. Yeah, Heartbeat. Yeah, exactly. Where's yeah, your performance on the floor? Yeah, it's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me in little voice. <laughs> I, got, oh, yeah. I got a part in Little Voice because oh, I yeah, filmed it here in Scarborough. Yeah. yeah, and if you remembered when they filmed Little Voice, every, almost everybody in Scarborough yeah. was in it. Yeah, and they're showing it at the Futurist Theatre, and everybody's there, like they're so excited to see yeah. themselves watching Little Voice. Yeah, and I was married at the time, and my wife says. That, that bit's coming up, wait, wait, oh, it's just mentioned Grand Hotel. Yeah. I says, nah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, said, and then it cut to another scene. I said, there you go, I'm on the cutting room floor. <laughs> <laughs> Story about That's me down there. Yeah. 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 That's with Brenda Blakeson as well. That, uh, yeah. Now. Yeah. 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 There you go. You're more mature detective. Yeah. Because you always seem to be tight. I play a lot of villains well. and a lot of policemen. Yeah. 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 You know what that's about true. the. Uh, well, I'll tell you a few, <laughs> few stories about the policeman over the years. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll yeah. cover those Believe as we that. get more into that. Yeah. But yeah. thank you so, so much. Alright. So take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. See you next time.